All right, let's be honest. You've been hearing words like Bitcoin and Ethereum thrown around for years, and you just nod and smile, pretending you know what's going on, hoping that nobody asks you to actually define them. Today, I'll explain Ethereum and how it's different from Bitcoin to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand why one is like digital gold and the other is like a giant unstoppable vending machine for the internet. And you'll be able to explain it without your brain turning into scrambled eggs. First, before we even talk about Bitcoin or Ethereum, we need to talk about the playground that they both play on. This playground is called the blockchain. I know, it sounds like a terrible board game that your uncle would invent, but it's actually pretty simple. Imagine you and all your friends have a special notebook. And not just any notebook, but a magic one. Every single person in your group has an exact copy of this same notebook. Let's say you want to write something down in it, like Sarah gave Tom one shiny rock. You announce it to everyone. Everybody pulls out their copy of the notebook and writes down on a fresh page. Sarah gave Tom one shiny rock. Now once everyone has written it down and agrees that, yes, that is what happened, you all magically staple that new page into your notebooks at the exact same time. Now, that page is a permanent part of the notebook. It's chained to the page before it. You can't rip it out, you can't use an eraser on it, you can't scribble over it to say, Sarah gave Tom 100 shiny rocks. And why not? Because if you tried, all your friends will look at their notebooks and say, Hey, my page says one shiny rock. Your page is wrong. You're a cheater. The only way to cheat would be to convince more than half of your friends to also cheat in the exact same way at the exact same time, which is super, super hard to do. And that's all a blockchain really is. It's a chain of pages or blocks that make up a public record book. Everyone has a copy, everyone updates it together, and it's incredibly difficult to cheat. It's a system built on trust, but without having to trust any single person. You just trust the magic notebook system. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum are built on this idea. They both use a blockchain. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the first big popular thing to use this magic notebook idea. The people who created Bitcoin had a very specific goal. They wanted to create money that wasn't controlled by any bank or government. They wanted to create digital cash. So the Bitcoin blockchain, that big shared notebook, does one thing and one thing only. It keeps track of who owns which Bitcoin. Every single page in the Bitcoin notebook is just things like account A sent 2 Bitcoin to account B. Account C sent 0.5 Bitcoin to account D. And that's it. That's literally the entire story. It's a system designed for one purpose, and it does that purpose incredibly well. Think of Bitcoin like a calculator. A calculator is an amazing tool. It's fantastic at doing math. It adds, subtracts, multiplies, and divides perfectly every single time. But that's all it does. You can't use your calculator to watch a movie. You can't use it to send an email, and you can't use it to play a video game. It has a single job, and Bitcoin is that calculator. Its job is to be secure digital money. You can own it, you can send it, you can receive it, and it's often called digital gold because, like a gold bar, it's valuable and rare. But you can't really build anything with it. You just hold it or trade it. So, for a while, that was the world of blockchain. A very secure, very boring notebook for tracking digital money. But then some other really smart people came along and looked at this whole magic notebook idea. They looked at the blockchain and said, Wow, this system is amazing for keeping records that no one can fake. But... What if we could write more than just money transfers in that notebook? What if we could write down rules? What if we could put little computer programs inside the pages? And that, right there, is the birth of Ethereum. If Bitcoin is a calculator, Ethereum is a smartphone. This is the most important thing that you need to remember. A smartphone can absolutely be a calculator. I mean, it has a calculator app and it works just fine. But a smartphone can also be a camera, a music player, a web browser, and a portal to thousands of other apps that do completely different things. The smartphone itself isn't just one tool. It's a platform where you can build and run other tools. And that's Ethereum. It's a blockchain, a magic notebook, just like Bitcoins, but its pages are way more advanced. You can still write down account A sent money to account B, but you can also write down computer code. You can write down instructions, rules, and entire applications. And this turns the blockchain from a simple record book into a giant shared computer that is run by thousands of people all over the world. It's often called a world computer. No single person or company owns it. Everyone who is part of the network helps run it. So, if Ethereum is a giant world computer, it needs some fuel to make it run, right? I mean, you can't just run programs for free. And this is where Ethereum's own currency comes in. It's called Ether, or ETH for short. 
While some people do buy and sell Ether as an investment just like Bitcoin, its main purpose within the system is to be the gas that powers everything. And think of it like an old arcade. The arcade is the Ethereum network, and the games are the programs and apps. If you want to play a game, you have to put a quarter in the machine. And in Ethereum, if you want to run a program, make a transaction, or use any app, you have to pay a small fee in Ether. This fee is literally called gas. It pays the people around the world who are lending their computers power to keep the whole system running. No gas, no ride, no Ether. No using the world computer. So, Ether is the fuel, not just the money. But the most important new trick that Ethereum brought to the party is something called smart contracts. I know the name sounds fancy, but the idea is kindergarten level simple. A smart contract is just a set of rules like a promise or an agreement that is written in computer code and stored on the blockchain. Because it's on the blockchain, it's permanent and can't be changed, and the computer network automatically makes sure that the rules are followed. No lawyers, no middleman, just code. The best way to understand a smart contract is to think of a vending machine. A vending machine is a robot that follows a very simple contract. The rule is, if a person puts in $2 and they press the button before, then the machine will release a bag of chips. There's no person inside the vending machine deciding if you deserve the chips. The machine doesn't care if you're having a bad day, it doesn't play favorites. It just follows its programming perfectly every single time. And a smart contract is just a digital vending machine for almost anything you can imagine. For example, you could have a smart contract for a bet between friends. You and your friend both send $10 to the smart contract, and the rule says, if the home team wins the baseball game tonight, then send all $20 to you. If the away team wins, then send all $20 to your friend. The smart contract is connected to a reliable sports score feed, and as soon as the game is over, it automatically sends the money to the winner. Your friend can't refuse to pay up, and you don't have to go chase him down. The robot vending machine handles it all. It's simply an agreement with rules that enforces itself. And these smart contracts are the building blocks of everything on Ethereum. When people build applications using them, they call them dApps, which is short for decentralized applications. That word decentralized is key. It just means that no single person or company is in charge. Think about all the apps on your phone right now. A social media company controls your social media app. A big bank controls your banking app. They can change the rules whenever they want. They can decide to shut down your account. They own the platform. But dApps are different. Because they run on the Ethereum world computer, which is run by everyone, they aren't controlled by a single entity. The rules are in the smart contract, and they're visible to everyone. To change the rules, the community of users would have to agree. It's like the difference between a kingdom ruled by one king and a town where everyone gets a vote on the rules. So, what can you build with these smart contracts and dApps? Well, this is where it gets really interesting, and where you see things that are just impossible with Bitcoin. One of the most famous examples is NFTs, or non-fungible tokens. Let's quickly break down that word. Fungible just means interchangeable. A $10 bill is fungible. If you and I both have a $10 bill, we can swap them and it makes no difference. They're worth the exact same amount and serve the exact same purpose. Bitcoin is fungible. One Bitcoin is the same as any other Bitcoin. Non-fungible means something is unique and cannot be replaced with another identical item. The original Mona Lisa painting, for example, is non-fungible. You can't swap it out for a poster of the Mona Lisa for the museum gift shop. A concert ticket for a specific seat on a specific night is non-fungible. Your childhood teddy bear with the one button eye is non-fungible. There's only one. An NFT is just a unique token created on Ethereum that acts as a digital certificate of ownership for something. Because it's recorded on the blockchain notebook, it's a public, verifiable proof that you, and only you, own a specific digital item. And that item could be a piece of digital art, a song, a clip from a video, or even a special item in a video game. It's like a digital recipe from the universe that says, Yep, this person owns this one-of-a-kind digital thing. And this is something you could never do with Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin's notebook is only for tracking Bitcoin. But Ethereum's notebook is for tracking ownership of anything you can imagine so long as you can program a smart contract for it. So, let's put it all together. What is the real difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, the purpose is the biggest difference. Bitcoin's goal is to be digital money. It's trying to be a better version of gold. Its value is in its simplicity and security as a currency. Ethereum's goal is to be a platform. It's trying to be a new kind of internet, a global computer where developers can build new, decentralized things that have never been possible before. The function is another key difference. The Bitcoin network only processes transactions of its own currency, Bitcoin. 
The Ethereum network processes transactions of its currency, Ether, but it also runs complex computer code for all sorts of dApps and smart contracts. Now, the analogy is the simplest way to remember it. Bitcoin is the simple, powerful, single-purpose calculator. Ethereum is the versatile, programmable smartphone that can run a million different apps, one of which can be a calculator. You can't build an NFT on a calculator, but you can easily build an NFT on a smartphone. So, when you hear someone talking about Bitcoin, think digital money. When you hear someone talking about Ethereum, think world computer or digital app store. One is a finished product. The other is a box of high-tech Legos for building new things. So, let's break it down one last time for the five-year-olds in the back. Bitcoin is a piggy bank, a very, very secure digital piggy bank. You can put coins in, you can take coins out, and that's it. Ethereum, on the other hand, is a magical toy factory. You need special factory coins called Ether to run the machines. But with those machines, you can build anything you can imagine. Robot assistants that follow rules perfectly, smart contracts, entire clubs that nobody owns, dApps, and official ownership certificates for your imaginary friend, NFTs. You see, you're not so clueless after all. You just needed someone to explain it without using words that sound like they were invented by a confused scientist. I mean, you're basically an expert now. You understand that one is simple money, and the other is a platform for building stuff. Now, Gil, explain this to someone at a coffee shop and watch their mind explode. You've earned the right to be that person.